Conclusions matter, whether it is an essay, an experiment, or even a sermon. And today's reading was the conclusion to Jesus's amazing Sermon on the Mount. And he frames it as a parable. So a simple story or picture which can convey so much more than words. And this one is certainly powerful and also beautiful in its simplicity. Jesus tells an account of two people who each build a house. The so-called wise man built his house on rock and the so-called foolish man built his house on sand. So that when the storms came, the foolish man's house is destroyed, but the wise man's house stands strong. Now, in order to understand what this parable means, let's start with who it is for. Who was Jesus speaking to? And the short answer is us. So Jesus addresses the parable to everyone who hears these words of mine. Now, this obviously makes sense at the time because he was talking to a crowd as well as his disciples. But it goes further than that in its application today. Jesus intended these words of mine to stretch beyond just that one sermon, but rather to the overall complete word of God as set out in the Bible. Now, the parable involves two men, both building a house. And size, material and structure aren't relevant because the house represents our individual lives and the way that we live them or build them. And we know that as Christians, we're not immune from times of trouble in our lives and we can expect the storms of life to come and go. So by coming to church, by reading our Bible, we are hearers of his word. As people, we all live lives. And we know that we will face times of trouble and suffering, which means that this parable is directed at us and we ought to pay attention to the message. So what is the message? What is the parable pointing out? Now, there is a simple contrast in the story. The wise builder hears Jesus's words and puts them into practice and the foolish builder does not. So the parable is gently highlighting the difference between those who have truly accepted Jesus as their saviour and those who have not. Now, if you remember, I spoke about obedience a few weeks ago and suggested that when we accept Jesus as our Lord and saviour, we trust in the goodness of God and yield to his will, when we effectively become the wise builder, there is a shift from being told what to do to being willing to do what we are told. And the shift starts when we become new creations in Christ and it grows throughout our lives as we put more of the things that we hear and learn into practice as we steadily grow in the likeness of Christ. But the foolish builder hears the same good news about Jesus but never puts it into practice. It, it might be that they hear the words but choose not to accept them and walk away completely. Or hear the words, but never really take the message to their hearts. They never truly accept Jesus as their saviour. And the Pharisees are a good example of this back in Jesus's time. They were amazing at keeping all of the laws, but they missed grace and relied instead on their own self-righteousness. And we still see people like this today, people who outwardly tick all the Christian boxes, but their heart posture and motivation are all wrong. And ultimately, God sees our hearts and knows. So what are the consequences of this distinction? Again, the wise builder, we are told, built his house on the rock so that when the storms came, it did not fall. Whereas the foolish builder built his house on sand. And when those same storms hit, his house fell with a great crash. So it is clear, therefore, that the foundation on which we build our lives is crucial. Now, those who accept Jesus have a foundation of rock, God's word, which will never change or shift on which to build their lives. And with a willingness and a heart to follow Jesus and with every brick built in obedience to God's word, 
we will build a life that can withstand any storm and stay standing. The alternative is to build on sand. Which leads me to ask, what are the things that influence your life choices the most? Is it popular culture, music, fashion, films, the latest trends on Instagram? Or do you hold fast to traditions? Maybe it's your own intellect, how you reason and logic out life. Or is everything centred around your career or your family? Or maybe even your emotions. Do you go with what makes you feel good in the moment? These things are exactly like sand, constantly shifting and unreliable. You know, culture moves on, traditions become outdated, our intellect will fail us, jobs will come and go, family situations will change and our emotions will lie to us. So when the storms of life come, as they inevitably will, there is nothing for us to stand firm on. Everything shifts under our feet and the consequences is that our lives can come crashing down. So what can we take away from this parable? Why did he use it as a conclusion to his teaching? Well, because it forces us to reflect on our lives and ask whether we have truly committed to following Jesus. Are we like the wise builder, building our lives upon the immovable truths and promises found in the word of God? Or are we like the foolish builder who builds upon a more transient footing? Jesus simply presents the options and the outcomes, and it is up to us which we choose.